In today's video, I'm going to talk about what it's like to talk about the most embarrassing episode of your life on the front page of one of the biggest news publications in the world. My name is Zachary Stockhill, and since 2013, I've been helping men and women from all over the planet overcome retroactive jealousy, overcome obsessive jealousy, and save their relationships. If you'd like to work with me one on one, or you'd like more information about my work, please visit my website at retroactivejealousy.com. Okay, back in 2018, I received an email from a journalist at BBC News. Most of you probably know BBC News is probably the biggest uh, media organization in the United Kingdom, enormous reach all over the world. BBC World News was always a constant for me in my travels. You know, whatever hotel room I was in all over the world, you can usually find BBC News. And the journalist was writing to me, asking me if I'd be willing to go on the record and talk to her about my experience of retroactive jealousy when I was a younger man. For most of the people watching this video, I'm sure you probably know that retroactive jealousy refers to unwanted intrusive thoughts, often obsessive curiosity, and what I call mental movies about a partner's past relationships and or sexual history. Short version is, it's hell. It's uh, one of the most painful and frustrating experiences that any human being can go through. And back in 2018, it had been, I think, four or maybe five years, I think, since I had been talking about retroactive jealousy publicly. I've been doing this for a while, but I'd never uh, put myself out there to such an extent that it was very likely that my grandparents and my friends from high school and all these people from my life would know about my own struggles with retroactive jealousy as a younger man. Frankly, I've always been very proud of the work that I do, of the impact that I've had on people. Uh, I love my job, I love what I do, and I'll proclaim that from the rooftops. But back in 2018, at least, I was still a little bit embarrassed, really, to talk about this issue publicly. Because a lot of the ways that I used to behave and act out and feel back in 2018 were still embarrassing for me. I'm a pretty confident guy, I'm a pretty proud person, but talking about the most embarrassing episode of your life on the front page of BBC News was at first a bit of a daunting uh, prospect for me. But I got over that, I did the interview uh, with the journalist who did a great job, and I wrote this article uh, in conjunction with her that was published on the front page of BBC News. So I woke up one morning and I literally saw retroactive jealousy on the front page of my BBC News app. And some people have asked me, you know, what was that like? And it was really interesting because my website, retroactivejealousy.com, absolutely blew up that day. I got all kinds of emails and interest, and the overriding message I got from so many people was a message of gratitude, thanking me for talking about this issue publicly. People had been living with this issue for 10, 20, 30, 40 years before they read about it in BBC News, recognized their story in my story, and many people, uh, fortunately, found it really helpful and liberating that now they had a term to associate with this weird disorder, retroactive jealousy. And obviously this led to a lot of people finding my work, my books, my courses, and all the rest, and getting relief and peace of mind. So I'm extremely grateful to have gone through this experience and been talking about this on the front page of BBC News. Another very interesting thing that might surprise some of you watching this video, we tend to think of retroactive jealousy as a very minuscule issue, you know, like most people don't have to deal with this and, and all the rest. I started getting emails, not many, but a few, from people in my personal life including some family members who experienced the same symptoms, who'd gone through the same experience that I was talking about. So the lesson I drew from that, and perhaps the lesson that you can draw as well, is that retroactive jealousy is, for most people, an incredibly private and embarrassing experience, one that they don't want to talk about. I had people in my personal life who only felt comfortable talking to me about this issue. You know, think about someone who wouldn't judge them. I think I'd be... <laughs> pretty high on that list of people who wouldn't judge a retroactive jealousy sufferer. But anyway, I had people in my personal life come up to me only after I'd, you know, did the article on BBC. So I think this shows that retroactive jealousy is far more common than we may realize. The other big lesson for me was just how incredibly liberating it is, and it was for me, moving forward, to talk about the most embarrassing episode of your life on the front page of the biggest news outlets, or one of the biggest news outlets, in the world. It was very liberating in a way, and it remains liberating today. Because once you kind of get that out there, once you're vulnerable enough to kind of share your story and all the warts and all the ugly bits, 
and just be completely just upfront about it, it's this incredibly liberating feeling of, well, there's nothing really left to hide. I've got nothing to hide. I've got nothing to lose. And a new sense of, I just, I care even less than I did before about what other people think of me. You know, people judging and people calling you names and all this stuff, you know. I think since I started writing about this issue publicly, since I published my book, Overcoming Retroactive Jealousy, since I started doing my blog and all the rest back in 2013, during that time, I've been pretty good at dealing with criticism, at dealing with haters. Because anytime you write or speak about anything, and I mean anything on the internet, that's going to attract the bottom feeders, frankly. That's going to attract criticism and trolls and all that stuff. I've always been pretty good at dealing with them. But after going through this experience with the BBC, talking about this publicly, and all my friends and family know and, and all this stuff, once I started going through that experience, my sense of just not giving a rat's ass <laughs> about other people, about their opinions of me, about their criticisms, that really grew. And I, I'm not exactly sure why, but I just this incredibly liberating sense of just not being self-conscious, not caring what people think of you, living your truth, being vulnerable, you know, admitting things that other people don't want to admit. It's very, very liberating. I often tell people life gets way, way, way better the less you care about what other people think. And that was, personally, that was my biggest lesson in this, just how incredibly valuable and liberating it can be to give less and less and less uh, of a care about what other people think. And above all, you know, the, the collaboration with the BBC in that article, you know, I still get people finding me today, all these years later, as a result of that article. This article was the biggest public exposure that retroactive jealousy has ever had. And I'm really grateful to the journalist who helped me out with that. I'll post a link in the description if you want to read the original article. But above all, if you take away anything from this, I would say retroactive jealousy is probably more common than you realize. You don't have to be embarrassed like I was. It's really not a big deal. You didn't choose this. You can choose your actions and your perspectives and your response to it. That's not to absolve you of blame for treating your partner poorly or anything like I used to do. But the point is, you can do something about this, and it's like you wouldn't judge someone for struggling with OCD, for example. Someone who goes to check to make sure their door is locked 50 times every night. You wouldn't judge that person, and there's no reason to judge retroactive jealousy sufferers as well. And most people are not judgmental. Most people were incredibly kind and understanding and appreciative of me sharing this message. And the other lesson, just life gets so much better the less you care about what other people think. So I would encourage you to talk more about this issue publicly and to, you know, to open up to people and you don't have to start blogging or, or do what I do or talk to the BBC about it, but it is liberating, sort of sharing more of yourself with people, sharing more of yourself with the world and building up that tolerance to criticism and, and negative feedback. Thanks for watching. Thanks for bearing with me today. If you got anything out of this video, please take a minute to let me know by clicking the like button below. You can also comment on this video with your thoughts. I would love to hear what you think. And while you're at it, please make sure you subscribe to my channel as well to be notified of new videos moving forward. Thanks again for watching, and I'll talk to you again very soon.